All right, we're doing some intensity testing of a platinum LED panel. Um, you, this is a slightly older version of platinum LED that does not have any control for the red or near infrared. So it's a slightly older model. I think it was made in uh, 2020. But anyway, we're trying to verify some of these intensity claims. So first we'll use a solar power meter, which we know reads falsely high, but the, you know, the disturbing thing I would show you is we're, you know, we're pretty lined up pretty well to the center point of the panel. So that's why I do this video from this view and we're lined up. It's kind of, you know, I gotta change the lighting here. So it's, we're lined up with six inches, but everything's washed out because of the brightness. So we're lined up pretty well with six inches and we're only reading 86 milliwatts per centimeter squared. That, that reading's in watts per meter squared. You just uh, change it by one decimal place. So it's 86 at six inches away, which is very weird. So, you know, this 10 Mars solar power meter is only a couple of years old and, uh, you know, I see almost everyone using it. So it's very odd to me we're getting such a low number on a 10 Mars solar power meter, which, you know, they claim to be using. So I don't know if I should retest this with a different solar power meter, but this is the same brand we see them using. And we're just going to scooch back also and do a measurement at, at 12 inches away. And you see, I'm just using this stool. So my hand's not doing any funny business. The stool is keeping us kind of at the same level and we just got to make sure everything's centered. And now we're pretty well at 12 inches away and we're at 89. And <laughs> did it just increase? So it's weird to me also, I don't know, this is not indicative of a 90 degree beam angle. So I would like to in also investigate a little bit more uh, the beam angle, but we're gonna get out the Ophir power meter and, and see what we can measure at six inches and 12 inches, see if we can get some sanity um, to all this stuff. Okay, we've got the Ophir power meter out. We're at six inches away. This is the sensor, the stand, you know, that's the stand, but the sensor's back here. So that's why we lined it up with the six inch mark. And then we've got the Ophir set up. The wavelength doesn't matter so much because it's a thermopile power meter and it's taking the area of the sensor and it's giving us milliwatts per centimeter squared. Up, so we don't need to do any math here. It's 43.5, which I've been saying for years is you know, half half the intensity of what these companies are measuring with the solar power meter. But again, there even the solar power meter measurements I just showed you was oddly much lower than what they usually report at six inches away. They usually say some sort of number that's much higher than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. I forgot what they say. Um, so anyway, so this is a interesting kind of revelation. Um, sorry, so that's at six inches away. I'll scoot, try to scooch everything back and just do a quick measurement at 12 inches away. Let's see if we're, how well we did here. So there's the 12 inch mark. I can scooch up the sensor a little bit and hopefully it doesn't fall off the table. All right, we're pretty well lined up. And again, we're doing this so we can stay kind of centered with the panel. And again, it's 43.8, so it stays very strong um, even at 12 inches away. We moved a whole six extra six inches away, but we haven't lost much, you know, power density. And that's a very interesting revelation. Um, I think their beam angle is much more narrow than what they're saying. They've always said something like 90 degree beam angle, but that doesn't make sense according to these intensity measurements. So just for another measurement and sanity check, I brought out uh, the Hopo color meter, and this is the model number here, um, that Alex Fergus also uses a very similar model. Um, and you can see, I just took a, a reading. Most of the measurement where we're lined up, you know, I thought we were pretty well centered in the panel. Most of this light is red, which again tells us we're really just lined up with with kind of probably a, a red bulb is kind of straight on to us and that that 
you know, lens must be very narrow because it's really taken over the intensity measurement and there's very little uh, near infrared in this, in this measurement at six inches away. So it's very interesting <laughs> what's going on. It's a very weird uh, panel. And that also explains why the solar power meter measurement is so much lower because solar power meters, they really jump up when they're re reading near infrared. Because again, with that sensitivity curve I showed in my blog. So the longer the wavelength, the more falsely high it goes. So if we're not lined up with near infrared, and they're probably taking their measurements, trying to line it up with the near infrared to get an extra boost to their marketing, then, you know, then they got problems. Here, I can show you. You can take a fresh measurement. So, you know, that was just a refresh of the measurement. So you can see it's all legit. And we're about six inches away. It says it's, you know, 42, almost 43 milliwatts per centimeter squared. But again, that really explains what what's happening, especially with the solar power meter, why it's so much lower. So you get these really massive hot, you know, hot spots and low spots and not very good blending of the wavelengths, even at six inches away, which really indicates, uh, you know, you've got some, some, you know, much more narrow beam angles than even <laughs> platinum LED thinks. You know, scooch it back. And again, this is going to, why it all makes sense now of why this intensity is still strong, then we're starting to get more near infrared into the measurement. So you're getting more overlap from all the LEDs when you get 12 inches away. So again, this is really indicative of something much more narrow beam angle than, uh, than we would have uh, assumed or thought. And again, you know, measurements only 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So again, really, you know, a lot of interesting revelations here. So we're just going to do a very low tech way to try to check what's going on with the beam angle in this platinum LED light. Um, so you can see we masked off a lot of the LEDs, but you can see we clearly left a few of the visible ones. And you can see that kind of angle there, and that does look like a 90 degree angle. But look what's going on. There's not a lot of light actually coming out at that angle. There's a much stronger beam coming here that's much more narrow. So if I want to try to sketch this on a piece of paper, it's kind of like going like, all right, we've got some beam that does look like a 90 up here, and then like a much stronger beam that's here. And that's, you know, due to, the, you know, kind of some odd uh, phenomena in the lens itself that's making a much more narrow beam. And again, if people got things professionally measured, um, beam angle actually has like a scientific definition that, you know, a, a, you know, some sort of large percentage or majority of the light. So I would say this is the real beam angle, this much more narrow beam we see out here. And that first beam angle is kind of a false thing. So it's kind of a, you know, a, a situation where they might not really understand or have properly characterized what's going on with the the beam angle because this looks a lot more narrow looks almost closer i would say almost closer to like a 30 degree and but out here they could have fooled themselves into thinking it was 90 degrees but really you know we see a much stronger pattern out here at the 30 degrees so that's you know what's explaining a lot of these phenomenon and like i said even alex fergus uh, might have observed more of those hot spots and that's what's really going on So I did download a protractor app and this secondary uh, stronger beam is closer to probably a 60 degree. So the first one is 90 degree, but you see there's not much actually coming out at the 90 degrees. It's much more funneled into this almost secondary 60 degree situation. And we can, if we can elevate this a little bit more, you can start to see, you know, even more of a, a narrow pattern coming when we elevate the, the paper a little bit more so you can see it coming straight out of the the LED that way as this very narrow pattern that's happening uh, so again you know people it's not that hard to get professional measurements but there's definitely something much more narrow going on than even 
platinum LED even seems to understand. So, you know, that's explaining a lot of these weird phenomena of why they think, you know, they've got better intensity at longer distances, but magically with 90 degree lenses that aren't really 90 degree lenses. All right, just to finish out a few more uh, questions I had about this panel is now I lined it up with a bigger spike of near infrared. So we've lined up the hopometer. We're getting 52 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So maybe their near infrared is a bit more powerful, but we've lined it up with the near infrared and I'll refresh the measurement just so you can see. So it refreshed it, so it's the same. 52, got a nice strong peak of near infrared. We're still at six inches away. There's the sensor lined up to the center of the panel. So now I'm gonna move in the solar power meter and try to line it up where, where the sensor is for the Hopo color. So it's right there, still six inches away. And now you see very strongly 118 milliwatts per centimeter squared. I taught you how to do the conversion. 118. So before we we're reading what, like 80? And so that's the thing. If they can line it up perfectly with their much more narrow beam angle lens than they, they think they understand, um, and line it up with a near infrared lens, you can get a much higher number at six inches away. So that's, again, all these factors can really stack in their favor to kind of kind of kind of make a, a funny situation and even Alex Fergus's review where now his latest one he only kind of relays the peak measurement he just doesn't do a generic center point because I think he kind of realized that you know you can if you scooch this over you know you can get a very different result especially on a solar power meter which like I said reads very falsely high so again it depends on where you're lining up things here right and you you know this dropped to 73 and you're still pretty well you know centered so again it's pretty crazy uh from 73 up to 111 118 so it's crazy um we're also going to check flicker real quick so you, you've seen i've got the flicker settings here zero 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 but i noticed it's kind of washing out the measurement so we've got the radex loop in here and the radex loop and flickers which is ironic but it, it drops to about 25 percent flicker so it's obviously not zero and but i noticed if we scooch this much further away maybe the sensor's getting kind of overloaded if i get it far enough away <laughs> it does eventually give me a real flicker number that makes more sense see now it gets me 35 percent flicker so you know this is reading 24 flicker and if if you you know and again that could be kind of a tricky thing if alex fergus is taking this measurement too far away and not realizing it could be a false reading it's overloading the sensor or whatever the programming is but this is still reading 24 you know there, there's obviously a difference but still it's a significant amount of flicker no matter who you're going with but um again this this thing that you know this hopeful color is a little bit more tricky than we we might have thought um so anyway that covers flicker and then that kind of you know helps reinforce how falsely high these can can jump up if you're you know especially targeting a narrow beam near infrared bulb all right so we're just doing a quick test to check the claim of Platinum LED's panel here. Uh, if it actually emits zero EMF at four inches away. So we've got everything set up four inches away. Here's the ambient levels. The panel is completely unplugged. Here's all the ambient levels exactly four inches away we're going to measure. So, you know, we've got a little bit of very low levels, uh, 0.1 milligauss. Um, on the gigahertz meter in the middle, that's 12 micro te mic nano Tesla, nano Tesla. And this is 0 0.06 micro Tesla. So, um, it seems like the coronet is reading a bit lower than everything else, 
But anyway, let's plug it in and see what we get. So I gotta plug that in. I gotta go around the back and try to turn it on from the switch in the back without messing everything up. Okay. All right, so I got that. My ruler got moved a little. Anyway, I'm gonna turn it on. And both are on. The screen's gonna adjust and it jumps up to 0 0.9. 0.9 milligauss on the left, 52 nano tesla, which I will have to convert later. That you can do kind of do a conversion to micro uh, milligauss or nano tesla or whatever you want. And then the coronet doesn't doesn't look like it changed much. It's like 0.2, maybe it was 0.05 before. Now it's 0.2, so it went up a little bit. So everything went up. You know, again, all these are probably accept acceptable levels, but it's definitely not zero, like you know, like they've been claiming for a while. Um, we're gonna scooch everything back and try to do a quick measurement at six inches away. So now we lined it up. We're gonna line it up with six inches away. Their ruler's kind of floating out there. But, you know, this is about six inches away. So we still got 0.5 uh, milligauss on the left, 27 uh, nano Tesla. So again, it's still something measurable. If I unplug this, I'll turn it off for first, be nice. Completely unplug, it goes back to, you know, very low levels. So again, it's not zero at six inches or four inches. All right, so that's our little test.